I have a new EV charger to test out today. This is the Talgy Oot. Talgy Oot? <laughs> I don't know. It's um, a level 2 charger. Let's check it out. Obviously, if you have been charging your EV using a level 1, so a standard 120 volt plug up to this point, you know how ridiculously slow that is. Um, and so to upgrade to a level 2 charger is going to make a world of difference. So <laughs> this right here is what we got to work with. So we have 11 kilowatts slash 48 amp output, obviously 240 volts. That's what makes it a level 2. Now, in order to um, plug this charger into the wall, you need a 240 volt outlet. I actually have a video that I made a while back about putting in um, such an outlet and I'll link that in the description below. And if you have one of those, there is really nothing much to uh, getting this system set up. Take out this first, we've got a holder, of course, cord is going to take up a lot of space. I believe this is a 20 foot cord. Sleek, clean. We have standard level 2, your 240 volt plug. Oh, okay, so let's see this in two parts. And we're going to connect this to the wall, I assume, and then this fits in there. And we have some screws and a plate. Okay. There's been a lot of new EV chargers coming out on the market lately. And obviously, if you do have an electric car, um, if you have the opportunity to charge at home it is you know so much easier it makes a lot of sense um, so I would say I mean <laughs> when you look at this there's not that many parts to this okay, I just took off some of these screws here because I thought let's take a look under the hood here I mean there's no reason why the homeowner would most likely ever do this I mean maybe the installer if you want to get an idea of things but let's see here pretty basic really so we have power coming in here and there is actually a panel on the other side if you want to hardwire this in and not use um, this one right here so that's an option okay we have power going out to the car and so this one right here this is a, a sensor a communication cable so this communicates with your car your EV get relay switches um, on here oh, this is where an SD card would go. Not sure why you would have an SD card. Um, this is also the screen, so store for that. Um, and this is communication, so this is Wi Fi or Bluetooth. Let's check if everything is connected well. It, it seems to be. So it's kind of interesting to see um, how these are connected we have another thing that's kind of interesting about this unit here is that there is an emergency emergency shut off button on the side here now this is a manual button so you have to actually activate this manually if you have an issue so if your problem if your car something's going wrong um, you have this hmm. Now I have reviewed a couple of EV chargers at this point. This is the first one that has had a one of these emergency shut off buttons. My fingers are so cold. It is very cold in here. Get this in there. Here we go. These are uh, pretty small screws, these guys right here. Um, but anyway, so we have two panels here that can come off. This is actually what hooks up to this guy. This is what you, you connect, install this panel on the wall or wherever you are installing it then you can hook this in but you can also take this off I guess if you want to do it some other way and this panel right here is um, if you want to access here and you want to hardwire this indirectly if you don't want to be dealing with this plug here so that's an option this cord is definitely thicker um, and a bit stiffer than some of the other uh, EV chargers that I've had a chance to try 
Um, I guess it's just something to keep in mind. Like if, because if when it's cold, you know, you have a harder time uh, bending it and moving it around. So you just might wanna um, park your car a little bit closer. I think this, this cord is 20 feet or 19 point something feet, which is like six meters. So still a, a decent amount of space to work with, but may want to park it a little bit closer just in case it's a little stiff to bend and move around you know of course when it's warm you know everything is more malleable everything moves easier it's only really a, a question when it's a little bit colder this is the bracket that this comes with that you will install onto the wall and then you will hook this into place this is gonna be connected like this where these are at the bottom ah okay there we go so just kind of like hooks into place. I got this bracket on the wall right here. This is where my plug is, my NEMA 1450 plug. Uh, so I have this really close, this cord, uh, the power cord is pretty, you know, close by. So I wanna make sure I install it close to the plug. Okay, we got it in, we pull it down and there we go. Okay, it's all connected, now we can uh, actually plug it in and then we have this guy and where we want to put this which is just a holder and then the cord kind of wraps around here a little bit okay so got this here So this unit is up on the wall. Currently the breaker is off, so we're gonna turn the breaker on and then we can charge the car up. Okay, so I got my breaker, EV. Let's turn this on. Okay. And right away, this one's turning blue. Please connect EV. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're searching for nearby devices. Okay, let's plug this guy in. Um, I mean, this very standard, very similar to other charging units that I have tried out. Um, has this little clicking sound. So one interesting thing about this unit is that you can set the amps uh, from one to 48 amps. So that's what we're testing out right now. Uh, first tried it at one amp, but the car didn't recognize that. But that is actually something that I have not seen in other units that I've tried out, where you can set that level. Okay, so now it is charging. You can see that the car is it's blinking there. So it's kind of nice how you can see in real time like what the current is, the voltage. Um, my car here, the most that it can draw is six kilowatt hours. And I have the amp set to 26 right now. Um, of course, you, if you had a different car, you could draw more, you have that option. Um, so kind of right, right now, I know I'm at about 55% in terms of my car here now, but you can turn it off through here as well. Charging mode, so you can do real-time charging, or fixed time charging, set a schedule obviously. <laughs> but kind of cool that you can set that amp, how you can do that precisely, that what fits the best with, uh, with your car. Yeah, my unit, that's my current unit that I have right now to charge my car. I'm just testing this out right now, but with that app, you can't see at all, you know, the current voltage, the current amps, the current power, all of that. So I rather like that. As you can set it to charge for an hour, that's actually rather nice. I can't do that with my current setup because I usually, <laughs> this is different from all the different cars and chargers, of course, but I hope to set a timer on my phone so I know when to shut this off. Uh, because I don't want to uh, charge this you know, all the way up to 100%. You can, you know, in most vehicles, you can also set this inside the car, but it's kind of nice to be able to set it in the charger as well. And you should be able to operate this in a wide range of temperature, negative 22 to 131 degrees Fahrenheit. That is negative 30 to 55 degrees Celsius. That is the operating temperature, the operating range that we have to work with here. How much faster is level two to level one? About seven times faster in terms of charging. It is 11 
kilowatt slash 48 amp output, uh, you can get up to 44 miles of range added per hour. Obviously that depends on your car and your situation, but that's the general range we're working with here. This also has a bunch of different protections, over voltage protection, over load protection, short circuit, ground, earth, leaking protection. You should be able to charge your EV using this product 10,000 times according to that. I guess that's how many times that this is rated to plug in and plug out and take it in and out. So it uh, should, should last for a while. So as this is being charged right now, um, I mean this is not a touchscreen. You can't actually uh, affect this in any way. The only thing you can do is attach that um, sh automatic shut off switch, that emergency shut off switch. Yeah, like you know if you don't have your app nearby and you need to shut that off. If something is going wrong you have that option um, but other than that this is just a visual and if you wanted to change any of these settings like the amp level for example that's what you do through the app. Here we can see right now okay so we have charged this for five minutes we have 6.4 kilowatts the voltage is 246 volts. The other thing you can do is set the rate that you are paying for electricity and it will calculate how much money you're spending, you know, so this charging session costs this much money. Of course, this was, we installed this inside now because that was easiest with the plug here, um, but you could just as easily install this outside since this is rated for indoor or outdoor, um, depending on uh, what, what works best for you. Okay, we're done, done charging it. And hook this back up here. Okay. And all it says here now is please connect it to the EV. Fun to review a new EV charger. This was the Telgi Oot. Um, I would say this is a nice basic unit. The, the app worked really well. I mean, basically it gave you a lot of information so that you could see what's going on. Cord is a little bit thicker. You do want to be conscious about where you place this in order to reach, you know, charging your vehicle. If you're curious about this particular unit, make sure to check out the link in the description below. Thanks for watching and uh, yeah, have a good one. 247 volts.